So I'm presenting a position paper that I've written together with uh, <coughs> Jakob Exman, a man that I have never met, uh, who is from the Jerusalem College of Engineering. He's appearing here tomorrow, uh, so we will have a, a good talk then. Uh, this is on uh, the requirements on a general theory, on general theories actually, of software engineering. So uh, in this paper we try to explain what we think are, are the uh, requirements or in fact it turns out that it's really more perhaps quality criteria and uh, uh, in, in this morning session I was already uh, talking in terms of these so, so maybe this is uh, um, perhaps the background to those dimensions that I was talking about previously. Uh, we argue in the position paper that uh, well if you accept these three things uh, then, then you will accept our four criteria. And the first thing is, uh, and you don't have to accept everything of these things, just uh, some parts. Uh, Kurt Levin uh, is a, a, a researcher who uh, made this one famous, uh, 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 there's this one famous quote from him, and that's all we take from him, Karl Popper, I've already talked about him, and Seymour, of course, uh, title of the workshop. Uh, I'll go through these four quality requirements um, in, in some um, in, in, in a, a few steps here. So the first thing when it comes to uh, general theory of software engineering, and this is I would say when it comes to a uh, theory of something that has uh, engineering aspects to it, is that well this statement there is nothing so practical as a good theory. So we propose in our paper that the concept practical, that means that you should be able to use the theory for something meaningful, for something useful. And the more useful it is, the better. And uh, in software engineering, the, we would argue that if you can use a theory to help you make good decisions, that's the best thing we can hope for. We have some more arguments for that in the paper, uh, but in principle, this is this is the base. And so, the first version of our first criteria is this: the quality of a general theory of software engineering depends on the extent to which it predicts the influence <coughs> of, software, uh, of the software decision makers' actions on the software development goals. So, the software decision maker has some knobs to turn. If you can turn those knobs to achieve your goals, if that can be predicted, then that's a good thing. If I omitted the word goals, yeah. goals is a bit picture? confusing. Yes, the word goal, the word no. the word goals is, is very yeah. important because you can have a theory that predicts if I change this attribute, uh, this this value, for instance, if I I take away some requirements, for instance, or, or if I uh, change a practice from one to something else. It can have, you can have a theory that predicts how that affects the, clothes, the colors of your clothes. But that's not important. What's important are your goals. So the goals are relevant. No, I don't know that. The goals, do they pertain to the software or to the software developer? Uh, well, let's say the software developer's goals. Uh, let, let me return to this because <coughs> I will well this means. Yes, I will refine this. Wish more happiness or more money? Yes, exactly this I will return to. Yeah. Okay. So we will have a refined version of this. Uh, already now I will refine one part of it, and that was I, I, I wrote uh, here the software engineering depends on the extent to which it can predict stuff. What extent? We've already talked about that previously. Uh, I would like to say that that's universality and precision, and that's what, what we uh, discussed earlier today. That's how much a theory can predict. Okay. Then I'll go on to a second one. This is from Popper. This one was also, we talked about earlier today, corroboration. If, uh, I think, everyone I've heard so far agrees with this, you have to test your theories. If they pass many tests, then that's a good thing. And that's an important quality. 
You have to test them against the real world. You do that by predicting something and then seeing if that prediction comes true. And then degree of formalization, also something that we talked about previously. Uh, and, and Popper here, he says that it has to do with consistency, that uh, self-contradicting theory, it says nothing really. Um, and uh, uh, therefore, formalization uh, it, it is an important criteria. Well, so we talked about all of these things previously today. Let's now, um, no, one, one more. This is the, uh, the final and the fourth criteria, which I also talked about earlier today, and that is the concept of measurability, or also something that was uh, mentioned by, by Howell here. You have to be able to measure things. And a theory, here's an example uh, of, of, of this. I called it external precision in the previous presentation. If you have a theory that represents something like system response time on an ordinal scale, say this is high, medium, or low, this is a fast system, or this is a slow system, then that doesn't have the same precision than if you can, if you can measure or predict, predict uh, the response time in seconds. So this is a precision that has to do with relation to the real world rather than relations between concepts. Now comes the uh, connection to CMAT, and this is also the, um, uh, I think the, the most interesting part that we've been uh, talking about, me and Jakob. And this is that we believe that we can extract the, um, the actions of the software developer, what you were asking about, and the goals from CMAT. So here's a picture where we try to express this. We think that a goal, a, a, a general theory of software engineering, it would make the most practical use if it could achieve these things. Here are the decisions that we can make. If we look at CMAT, they have the alpha, sorry, for instance, requirements, way of working, theme, and so on. If you take those, you say, okay, so let's change those. These are the dials that we can turn. These are the decisions that we can make these are the different kinds of actions that we can take as software engineers. We can make changes to these. What the effects those changes have? Well, they can have effects on all kinds of things. Some of those things we are interested in. Some we are not so interested in. Some are irrelevant. Um, so for instance, if we change the way of working somehow, we can, that can, like, it can end up that we have to change our lunch time. But that's not important. So what's important, that's we also find that in CMAP, that's those are the goals. What is it that is important in software engineering and for software developers? Well, in CMAP, it is we want happier customers, want better software, want faster projects, and possibly cheaper also. So these are the goals of software engineering as posited, posited by CMAP. These are the dials we can turn. These are the gauges we can watch, and then the question is, if we change something down here, if we change our way of working, if we implement a new practice, how does that affect these things? And if we, if we reduce the requirements or change them, what effect will that have? Will it make the software better? Or worse, uh, will, will it be easier to implement? Will it be faster? And so, if this is, <laughs> these are the knobs, these are the gauges. Then the the main part, the unknown part of the theory, is this stuff in between here. So there are lots of things here. For instance, I, I would imagine that one thing that would be that has to appear somewhere here is a, the concept of separation of concerns. This is something very software engineering. Somewhere here, changes that we do here will affect how well things, concerns are separated. That will have effects on these things. And there are many kinds of, many, many different variables that we can imagine in here. Um, and we say that, well, uh, we don't know what they are, but uh, 
this is what we think are uh, requirements on a theory of, of software engineering. So that's our brief paper. We have uh, started with Kurt Levin, Karl Popper, and Zermatt, and then we got those four attributes. And I think this one is the most interesting. Thank you. Thank you.